you will be able to do in in the part three of this uh, part three of the series is to perform the dynamic analysis for when one object is impacting your wind turbine blade and your simulation would look something like this as you see here so in this case you can see the damage in the fibers tensile damage in the fibers this is compressive damage this is matrix compression so and you can see the extent of the damage so red color means the value is one okay as i said in at the start of this video or this part we, got, we are going to do an impact analysis of a wind turbine blade so if let's say if a foreign object strikes your wind turbine blade which could be a bird strike or, or anything else then what happens to your wind turbine blade and how to simulate that whole process all right so in this case again i have the same blade from the previous two parts for edgewise and flapwise loading case and the blade is very much the same while i have an additional part in this case i'm using a spherical object you can make your own object like a bird or something and so that's these are the two parts which we require right then we go to the properties and now i have to define the material properties of the bird as well i am calling it an object right now and i have defined the density and also the properties of young's modulus and poisson's ratio for this case which is very much the properties of a steel ball or something like that which is very intense but just to demonstrate for the demonstration purposes it's okay material properties are the same i have used density which is the same elastic properties in all three directions are the same young's modulus poisson's ratio and shear modulus for the damage criteria i'm using a hashin type damage criteria and i'm using the same values which i have used my in my other composite failure videos one of them is shown on the top here right now and these are the values i have used for different types of failure longitudinal ten tensile and compressive and shear all right for damage damage evolution part i am using an energy based criteria with linear softening so after the in damage is initiated my stress strain curve will go down linearly okay and these are the values again these are taken from literature okay and yeah it's for, for typical composite fiber reinforced composite so that's what i have done here for for the damage part which is a critical to simulate the damage due to this object strike and then we go to the assembly and again you can assemble both parts together so this is the first part and this is the second part and i bring both of them here and then i arrange them in such a way so so it looks something like this so yeah so if you look at the object the blade is like this and the object is very near to that blade and it's going to strike with certain velocity okay and in this case i'm applying it here which because this is the rotational direction but again based on the angle of attack and everything you can decide where it's going to have an impact or if you already have a case study uh, from inspection then you can also do the same and find the location and arrange this bring this thing near to that surface where it's going to strike all right so it's just a translation option so you just have to press this translate select this object and then translate from one point to another point and so it's typical way of doing it in any cat software so nothing different then i will go to the step module now in this case since we have a dynamic problem with an impact so we have to use dynamic explicit analysis so in this case again if you're not familiar with dynamic explicit analysis then again i would recommend you to have a look at the video on the top here which is for beginners who have no idea about dynamic explicit analysis and that is everything else is default i'm not changing anything at all here so just the dynamic inferences all right outputs are also default so i'm not changing those here then i go to the interaction and in this case again i have a reference point and i will couple it with this this whole surface as i did before all right so this is fixed i'm not applying any other load so let's go to the loadings now and you will see there are no loads here and there is a fixed boundary condition here right and and then i'm applying an initial condition or a predefined condition as a velocity so i give an initial velocity of this object as whatever so in this case I, again i have taken a typical bird speed and i have given that speed to the whole thing as an initial predefined pre condition so in, in, so from the first step it will start to move in this direction with this kind of a speed throughout the total time of one second okay 
in reality your your this thing as soon as it starts to contact with this due to the reaction it will slow down because there is no push from anything else so this will not be realistic but we are going for an extreme case so i will just keep it going up to one second all right so that's pretty much it then i have to mash so i have mashed both parts separately again i'm using that mesh here but if you want to model mesh these with nice hex mesh then have a look at the video on the top here which where i have defined explain how to how to mesh these kind of geometries by partitioning and this one is the same mesh as before again i am not a good mesher so excuse me for that then i go to the job i create an explicit dynamic job as i do it here and then i run the analysis once the analysis is finished again it's going to take time so i have already run it for you guys and you can see it's finished without any problems everything completed and this kind of analysis took around so I started around whatever. So it took a long time. You see it, I started around two o'clock and it finished at around eight. Right, so it took pretty long time to finish this analysis. So it's a big job. All right, so now I go to the results. Maybe if I can rotate, yeah. You can bring the edges and everything if you don't like these kind of things, but I prefer to have this. And you can see it's trying to indent into it. And you don't see much of the element deletions because not all the elements are face failing except for these two. That's why these two elements are deleted. Uh, let me see if I can improve the visibility. Uh, I can see the, some lines, but it should be showing this. What if I show this? And you see these elements are deleted because the, all the plies are failed in this case with all the fibers and matrix so that's why it's showing that but other than that the elements are not deleted okay so i'm going to go back to that now if you want to see what are the different extent of damage so this is typical thing now if you see how it looks so it, it, the initial predefined velocity it strikes your blade as soon as it contacts you will see contact stress is being developed See, it's in contact now almost, but the values are low, so you do see everything in blue area. If I stop it here, so you see already stresses are there, and in any case, so this is how it goes. I'll show you the animation at the end. So this is how it looks like. Now, if I want to plot different types of damages, so I can see the damage in fiber due to compression, and I can see it's failing. And kind of compression in this area than these areas it's almost one so this the fiber in this area i have failed under compression this is tension so some areas are ten tension again mesh needs refinement but this is okay then matrix under compression so you see matrix is pretty much damaged because you have a huge amount of indentation or deformation in your blades since there were no internal structures stiffeners or, or spars present inside the blade then under tension also you see these are under tension and they are also failing but not all of them have failed so that's why you don't see and then shear type damage as well you see at the end of this only these elements are deleted because this element has all the things have which have failed in reality your, your indentation might not go that far if it's a bird it will may stop at some point due to the reaction and it will fall down or whatever but in this case we went for extreme case now if you say that okay i still if, if i want to say that okay if my shear base criteria is met my element should be deleted in from the simulation then what you can do is you can go to this uh, create display group option then elements then you select results value and then you say anything bit, bit above one let's say 1.5 although it will never go to 1.5 but as soon as the value is one these elements should be deleted so that's what you see here now if you start with the initial step you see there is no element deletion and then as you start the animation now so you see elements have started to delete now in this case okay so these elements are deleted not deleted but removed from the simulation although all the all the plies are not failed yet and so so but some of the plies are filled and based on that it's just deleting the elements so i hope this makes sense
and this is the way you can do some simulations on simulating damage due to bird impact or any other foreign object impact on your composite structure whether it's a wind turbine blade in this case or any other structure if you have any further questions please comment below and i will get back to you with some replies thank you very much again for watching and have a great new year